With every new release, Betaflight seems to get more and more complicated. And that leads people to ask me, should I upgrade? Or can I just keep flying the same thing I've been flying forever? And my answer is usually, if you're happy with the way Betaflight's flying, you don't need to upgrade to the latest. Newer versions of Betaflight add things that make quads fly a little bit better, maybe some new convenience features. But at the end of the day, if you're happy with how your quad flies on 357 or whatever, just keep running it. Well, that ends today. Betaflight 4.1 includes a feature that is so powerful in its ability to make nearly any quad fly better. And I don't just mean the traditional five inch mini quads that most of the developers fly when they're developing and testing, but micro quads, three inch, two inch, and big quads like seven inch cruisers or even 13 inch beast class, X class rigs. The feature we're talking about is RPM filters. And if you've been hesitant to update to the latest and greatest beta flight, I have bad news for you. RPM filters might be the the thing that just means you have to upgrade now, they're that good. And if you're excited about new versions of Betaflight, then I have good news for you because RPM filters all by themselves are just a good enough reason to jump on Betaflight 4.1. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Before we get into this video, let me just let you know, this is part of a playlist of Betaflight 4.1 topics. And the link to the playlist is down in the video description. And my goal with the playlist is to answer every possible question you could have about Betaflight 4.1. Well, it's gonna be a while till I finish, but in the meantime, check out that playlist and see the topics that I've already covered if you wanna know more about the new stuff that's coming with Betaflight 4.1. On with the video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up bi-directional D-Shot and RPM filters in Betaflight 4.1. And in case the intro didn't sell you, I 100% think that everybody who can use these features should be using these features. It's probably too soon to say that they will make every quad fly better when configured properly, but I almost want to say that. So what is bi-directional D-Shot and the RPM filter and why is it so freaking amazing? Well, if you want the Betaflight devs definition, you can go check out this wiki page right here. It's linked in the video description. But my sort of short version of it is that, like what do filters do? Why do we even have filters? The goal of the filters is to eliminate the motor vibrations from the gyro data so that the PID controller can focus on the quadcopter's actual movements. And the way that we've done that in the past is with low pass filters, gyro low pass one, gyro low pass two, D-term low pass one, D-term low pass two. And think of a low pass filter as just turning down the treble on your car stereo. The high frequencies get muted, the low frequencies are left alone, and that's, that's basically what these low pass filters are doing. Now, low pass filters are effective, but not very specific. You see, we don't know what f RPM the motors are spinning at, at any given point in time. So we can't target the exact frequency that the motor is making. So we just kind of like lop off everything above 180 Hertz and call it a day. Well, that's not very effective. For one thing, it adds a lot more latency than you really would like. And for another thing, it, it actually doesn't have as much attenuation as you'd prefer. Notch filters are a way of focusing on a specific, very narrow frequency band. And the problem with notch filters is that if they're not on exactly the right frequency, then you won't get any filtering. Imagine if that we had a notch filter targeting 400 hertz, but the motor was spinning at 420 hertz. Well, the motor, would we just basically wouldn't have any filtering at all, and that would be a bad thing. So the reason bi-directional D-Shot and RPM filter are so powerful is that bi-directional D-Shot lets the ESC report the motor's actual RPM in near real time back to the flight controller. And the flight controller can then target notch filters at the exact frequency of vibration that the motor is making, again, in near real time. These filters can be very precise and very narrow, which means that they have very little latency, but they're still very, very effective. And that's why RPM filtering is such a big deal. In fact, RPM filtering doesn't have just one notch filter, but it actually has multiple notch filters for each of the motors. 
notches on the X, Y, and Z axis of the gyro data, and the motors aren't all spinning at the same uh, RPM, are they? They're spinning at different RPMs. We have multiple notches for each motor, and it's just a very, very effective way of very precisely targeting the motor frequencies with very little latency, and that's why it's such a big freaking deal. So then you want to set it up. Let's go do it. The first thing you're going to want to do is download Betaflight Configurator. You're going to need at least Betaflight Configurator 10.6.0 to follow along with this tutorial. At the time of this recording, 10.6.0 is in Release Candidate 2. It hasn't been fully released yet, but you're going to want to go ahead and download that and install it. Now, if you're using BLHeli 32 ESCs, you want to download BLHeli Suite version 32.7 or newer. You may have seen some other tutorials that where you have to download a hex file manually for your ESCs. You do not have to do that anymore as long as you have BLHeli Suite 32.7 or newer. If you're using BLHeli S ESCs, the BLHeli devs have not put support for bi-directional D-Shot into BLHeli S. And until recently, I would have said, and you simply can't use this feature, and that would be really sad. A developer by the name of Joe Lucid has BLHeli S is open source, unlike BLHeli 32. So he just took the BLHeli S source code and extended it to support bidirectional D shot. You can download the JESC configurator from here, and you can use that to flash JESC onto your BLHeli S ESCs. However, it's not free. In exchange for the work he did, he asks for like, I think it's like a dollar an ESC. So you got to go buy a license for it if you want to do bidirectional D shot using BLHeli S ESCs. So I'm going to go ahead and download BLHeli Suite 32. Um, I will put a link to this Google Drive folder in the video description so you can download it easily. Also notice that unlike before, there didn't used to be a Linux or a Mac OS version of BLHeli Suite. There is now, so you can get it for those platforms as well. Here in Betaflight Configurator, I'm just going to go ahead and connect and I'm going to check the... I'm going to check the version, uh, the target for this is the Pyrodrone F4. And I'm just going to type BL for bootloader to put it into bootloader mode. Here's the Pyrodrone F4. And we're going to flash Betaflight 410 uh, RC6, release candidate 6 is the latest version. If you don't see the release candidates, you need to enable show unstable releases. Um, at some point in the future, Betaflight 4.1 will come out and you won't need to do that anymore, but it's not quite out yet. Pyrodrone F4, 410 RC6, load online, and flash the firmware to my flight controller. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to restore my configuration, but do not just paste in a config from a previous version of Betaflight into 4.1. It will make problems. Do not do it. Here in BLHeli Suite 32, I'm going to select my COM port. I'm going to hit connect. I'm going to hit read setup. All righty. Let's do flash BLHeli. And we're going to flash 32.7, latest available rev re revision. Now that we've got Betaflight 4.1 and BLHeli 32.7 on the flight controller and the ESC, the next thing to do is to go into Betaflight Configurator. And here in the Configuration tab, we're going to want to set the gyro update and PID loop frequency and the motor output. Now, I want you to start by setting the, the motor output to DSHOT 300 and the gyro and PID loop to 4K and 4K. And we're going to hit save and reboot on that. And some people are going to be like, whoa, whoa hang on, why, why not 8K? Isn't faster, better? Uh, RPM filtering and bidirectional DSHOT are somewhat processor intensive. So, And you have to be running an absolutely rock solid uh, PID loop rate. It can't vary or fluctuate at all. So for most flight controllers, 4K, 4K is where you're going to want to be at. What you want to do is go to the CLI and type tasks. And you want to look at the gyro slash PID line. And what you want to see is that the rate slash hertz is very, very close to 4K. In my case, it's 39.59, pretty close. And what you want to see is that the max load is less than 100%. In my case, it's 27.4%. If I go back to the configuration tab and I set that to 8K, 8K, how am I doing? Oh, and for 8K, you would want to change from DSHOT 300 to DSHOT 600. Let's check out our tasks. Here we can see that the rate is 7807. That's pretty far off from 8000. 
and the max load is 54%. Now, that's not 100%, but that, we haven't even started flying yet, okay? So that's only going to get worse. That's no good. Now, this is an F4 processor. If you have an F7 based processor, or if you're lucky enough to be using an H7 or one of the even faster processors, you may be able to run at 8K, 8K. But for most people, you're going to want to be at 4K, 4K, and DSHOT 300. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to count the number of magnets on my motor bell. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little piece of tape and tape over that magnet. There we go. So, that's magnet number one. I'm going to go around two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen magnets. And that's actually most mini quad sized motors are going to have fourteen magnets. So we've got fourteen magnets on our bell, and we're going to go ahead and enter that number here where it says motor poles, the number of magnets on the bell. After that, you're going to turn on bi-directional D-shot right here. And if you've used this in the past and you had to paste in like command line snippets and all kinds of nonsense, the devs have gotten it to a point now where it's as simple as just flipping a switch. And we'll hit save and reboot. The next thing to do is to go to the motors tab. And what you wanna look at here is the number of errors. This is the number of D-shot errors. And right now it's at 100% because my ESC is not plugged in. So let's go ahead and plug in the ESC. And we should see those errors go to 0%. People always, well, what if it's at like 5 It should basically be either at 0% or 100%. If it is not at 0%, then you need to stop. Do not proceed. You may need to go down from uh, D-shot. From If you're trying to use 8K, 8K and it's not quite working, go down to 4K, 4K. Go from D-shot 600 to D-shot 300. But you basically want it to see it at 0% basically all the time. And we can, I understand the risks, props are removed, and we can actually spin the motors a little bit and watch what happens. And we should see the RPM is updating here and 0% errors, that's what we need. Okay, so now bi-directional D-shot is working, but that doesn't actually help you until you enable the RPM filter. In order to do that, we're gonna go to the PID tuning tab and the filter settings tab and what we're going to do is we are going to oh well, how about that it's already on we need to turn on the gyro rpm filter right here now at this point you might think you're done but don't just go fly your quadcopter yet you've turned on rpm filtering but you've actually probably made your quadcopter fly just a little bit worse and the reason for that is you added more filtering. Betaflight default filtering is already, it's plenty for most quads. So adding more filtering will just make the prop wash just a little bit worse because it's added more latency. We need to sort of reshuffle the filters just a little bit to make up for the additional latency of the RPM filter. And here's how we do that. Anytime you've got something that's vibrating at a certain frequency, you can also have harmonics of that frequency, which are higher frequency peaks at multiples of the main frequency. Those harmonics are always weaker in strength than the main frequency. And uh, according to Mark Spatz, uh, his YouTube channel is UAV Tech, and he knows a lot about black box log analysis, PID tuning, filter tuning, and so forth. According to him, he, there are very few times when he's ever seen there be strong harmonics in a black box log. So he recommends setting the harmonic to one. That means we will only filter the primary RPM frequency of the motor and not worry about harmonics. And that reduces the latency of the RPM filter itself. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reconfigure the Betaflight dynamic notch filter to account for the fact that we now have the RPM filters at work. And the difference between the dynamic notch and the RPM filters, they're both notch filters, but the dynamic notch filter constantly analyzes the gyro data looking for noise peaks and dynamically targeting them. And it, it used to do that by looking for the motor noise peaks, but since we've got the RPM filters now perfectly targeting the motor noise peaks, we can adjust the behavior of the dynamic notch to look for, well, to look for what else? Why don't we just turn the dynamic notch off? You might consider doing that, but you probably shouldn't because 
not all vibration on a quad comes from the motors. Most of it does. But if you have like a loose screw or maybe your, your flight controllers come loose and it's kind of flapping or maybe your antenna is a little bit loose and it's wiggling and vibrating, you can get vibrations on the quad that aren't coming from the motors and the dynamic notch is going to, now we're going to reconfigure it to focus on just that stuff. And the way we're going to do that, first of all, is we're going to change the dynamic notch with percent. Normally the dynamic notch actually has two different peaks and it's trying to tune those peaks for two different sets of frequencies. We're going to change that down from eight to zero, and that is going to make there be just one notch looking for one frequency of interest. We're going to change the dynamic notch filter range from medium to low, and that is going to cause the dynamic notch to focus on frequencies below about 330 hertz. Again, the motor noises are up above that, but we don't need it looking up there because the RPM filter is going to be handling that perfectly. And we're going to change the dynamic notch Q from 120 to 200. This changes the width of the dynamic notch and makes it just a little bit narrower. Um, it was wider because with the motor frequency constantly changing, the dynamic notch had to be a little bit imprecise just to try to catch the motors, but we can make it be a little bit more precise and, for, and reduce its latency by changing the dynamic notch Q to a higher value. Finally, we're going to change the dynamic notch min hertz from a default of 150 down to about 90. Again, we want it to be focusing on those lower frequencies to try and uh, knock them out effectively. At this point, your quad should be flying pretty freaking good, but there's one more thing you can do to try and get it flying even better. Go fly a test back with it configured as shown here. And if your motors are cool or maybe slightly warm, but not like hot, then you can start to reduce the filtering even further. And we do that by moving these sliders. Uh, I suggest you just move the gyro and the D-term sliders together and maybe move them two clicks to the right, save and fly a couple packs. And again, if your motors are maybe warm to cool, keep going and just keep going. Eventually you'll get this warning. Current slider positions may cause fileways, motor damage or unsafe craft behavior. Proceed with caution. Take that seriously. But again, if your motors are if your motors aren't too hot, you can keep going to the point where you reduce filtering. I suggest you I suggest you do this maybe with a beat up set of props, not like a brand new, nicely balanced set of props. And that'll give you just a little bit of protection if you like bend a prop and need to fly home that you don't smoke a motor. But basically, you want to minimize the amount of filtering you got while keeping your motors not too hot. How hot is too hot? Well, if I pinch the motors and I f I feel like uncomfortable but like I'm not like oh ow then I feel like that's like warm but if I pinch the motor and I'm like oh that's starting to hurt I feel like that's hot so that's the final step in the past I've told you that what you should do is what I do is actually just turn these filters off in fact in the past I've turned all of these filters off and I have just used the d-term low pass that approach is for Betaflight 4.0 only on 4.1, the devs say, do not disable any of the filters. Just use the sliders to move the filter cutoffs up. That's what they recommend. And that is going to do it for this video. Now you know how to turn on RPM filters and bidirectional D-shot. And I'd love to hear in the comments how this is working for you. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.